When a Raptor 3 engine violently exploded at SpaceX's McGregor test facility last week, the internet immediately erupted with speculation. Was this a catastrophic failure? Had SpaceX's lunar ambitions just hit a major roadblock? But here's what almost nobody noticed. This explosion might actually be the best news for the Artemis moon program. While everyone was focused on the dramatic fireball in Texas, something equally significant was happening 400 miles south at Starbase. The iconic orbital launch mount that caught the world's attention during those early Starship flights. SpaceX just knocked down its first massive leg, erasing a piece of launch history right before our eyes. But why destroy something that's been working? Here's where things get interesting. That Raptor explosion wasn't during a routine long-duration burn like we've seen before. This time it happened at startup, the split second when the engine ignites. And according to leaked internal documents, SpaceX has less than 20 months to nail down engine relighting in space before their uncrewed lunar landing in June 2027. So what really caused that explosion? Why is SpaceX racing to demolish their proven launch infrastructure? And what does a mysterious situation unfolding aboard China's space station have to do with all of this? The answers reveal SpaceX's actual timeline for the moon, and it's far more aggressive than anyone outside the company realized. What's the real reason SpaceX is willing to blow up engines and tear down their own launch pad? Let's talk about what actually happened at McGregor, because the explosion itself isn't the story. It's when it happened. SpaceX has destroyed Raptor engines before. Over the years, they've melted down during long-duration burns, failed under extreme pressure, and yes, exploded spectacularly. But those failures followed a pattern. They occurred deep into testing, after engines had been firing for seconds or minutes at full power. Engineers could analyze heat stress, vibration data, sustained pressure loads. This Raptor 3 detonated at startup, the exact moment it tried to ignite. That's a completely different failure mode, and it should have triggered alarm bells across the industry. Startup failures suggest fundamental problems with ignition sequencing, turbo pump design, or manufacturing quality. The kind of issues that normally ground entire fleets while engineers investigate. SpaceX didn't even pause their schedule. No emergency statements, no investigation announcements. Just business as usual at Starbase while the wreckage cooled in Texas. That silence reveals everything. When SpaceX encounters real problems, genuine threats to their timeline or safety, they react immediately. They ground vehicles, they investigate publicly, they adjust operations. The lack of response tells us they got exactly what they wanted. Data at the edge of failure. Here's why this matters. Flight 12 launches in January with the program's first in-space engine relight. After shutdown, a Raptor 3 has to coast through the vacuum of space, experience thermal cycling from negative 270 degrees Fahrenheit to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, then fire up again on command. Everything coming after, orbital refueling, lunar landings, crew missions, depends on this capability working perfectly. You can't simulate that kind of stress gently. SpaceX needed to know the absolute limits of Raptor 3's startup envelope, so they pushed one until it broke. Now they know their margins. Now they know how much safety buffer exists between normal operations and catastrophic failure. The timeline makes this even more critical. Leaked documents show the uncrewed lunar landing demonstration scheduled for June 2027, just 19 months away. Before that, orbital refueling tests begin in June 2026, only seven months from now. Each refueling mission requires multiple engine burns, shutdowns, and restarts in space. There's no room for uncertainty about whether these engines will relight. 
By September 2028, astronauts need to trust their lives to these systems during a crude lunar landing. That's 33 months to perfect every aspect of engine reliability, refueling operations, and landing procedures. In aerospace terms, that's not comfortable. It's brutally aggressive. So SpaceX destroys engines now, while they still have time to learn, modify, and improve. Better an explosion on a Texas test stand than a failure beyond Earth orbit with crew aboard. While McGregor tests engines to destruction, Starbase is literally demolishing its own history. November 16th marked a turning point when construction crews toppled the first leg of orbital launch Mount Pad 1. This wasn't just infrastructure. This was the mount that supported Starship's early flights, the system that proved the concept could work. Now it's coming down, piece by piece. The remaining five legs fall this week. Then crews excavate the new flame trench, pour reinforced concrete, install upgraded systems, and rebuild everything to version 3 specifications. SpaceX estimates completion by mid-2025, roughly six months of intensive construction. But here's the key detail everyone's missing. The chopsticks on Pad 1 will be ready much sooner. SpaceX is shortening both arms and reconfiguring the catch mechanism to handle Starship V3's dimensions. That's a weeks-long modification, not months. Why rush the chopsticks while letting the rest take time? Because SpaceX needs dual-stage catching capability, both booster and ship, before the full pad reconstruction finishes. The chopsticks represent the path to true reusability, catching both pieces of Starship and turning them around for another flight within hours instead of weeks. Meanwhile, Pad 2 nears completion. Last week, teams installed the Quick Disconnect Methan Hood, the final major component. Fuel lines are integrated, the deluge system runs continuous tests, and the chopsticks cycle through their full range of motion. Everything points toward an imminent static fire test. There's one holdup. Booster 18 needs to complete cryogenic testing and receive its Raptor engines. And in a move that shows SpaceX's relentless iteration, Booster 17, originally planned for Pad 2 testing, is already being scrapped. The hardware is barely a year old, but it's obsolete compared to what's coming next. This brings us to Ship 39, the first complete Starship version 3, and the numbers here reveal something remarkable. SpaceX rolled the final aft section into Mega Bay 2 last weekend and completed the full stack. From nose cone to engine section, Ship 39 came together in just 33 days, nine days faster than the previous record with version 2. That's not just faster manufacturing, that's SpaceX fundamentally changing how quickly they can produce spacecraft. Over the next two years, they need multiple version 3 prototypes for refueling tests, payload deployments, landing demonstrations, and crewed missions. The faster they build, the more attempts they get at perfecting each operation. Ship 39 moves to cryogenic testing now, with the test stand already relocated to the production site. Everything aligns for Flight 12 in January, the mission launching Starship's most ambitious operational phase. But half a world away, China's space program is teaching us exactly why SpaceX's aggressive testing matters so much. China's Shenzhou-21 crew is currently aboard Tiangong Space Station with a potentially damaged return spacecraft. After Shenzhou-20 landed safely, concerns emerged about the Shenzhou-21 vehicle's condition, the ship that's supposed to bring the current crew home. China can't leave astronauts in orbit with compromised escape capability, so they're accelerating Shenzhou-22. Reports from CNSA watchers show rocket testing underway and cargo loading focused entirely on crew safety. No scientific payloads, no experimental objectives. This is a rescue mission disguised as routine rotation. Here's the tension. 
China is compressing six months of preparation into 10 to 20 days, while previous reports suggested eight-and-a-half-day emergency launch capability extending to 20 days raises hard questions about spacecraft readiness versus crew risk exposure. China faces exactly what SpaceX is engineering solutions for. How do you balance speed with absolute reliability when human lives hang in the balance? Rush the launch with incomplete verification and you might send astronauts up in a vehicle that fails. Wait too long ensuring perfection and you leave the current crew vulnerable to whatever's wrong with their return ship. This is precisely why SpaceX explodes engines at McGregor and tears down proven infrastructure at Starbase. When Artemis astronauts depend on Starship for lunar access, there won't be time for lengthy investigations or cautious delays. Systems must work, period. Engines must relight in space, refueling must execute flawlessly, and landing sequences must work without error. SpaceX is systematically eliminating uncertainty now, before human lives enter the equation. Every destroyed engine, every demolished pad, every accelerated build teaches them something critical about margins, limits, and reliability. With 19 months until that uncrewed lunar demonstration, and 33 months until crew trust these systems with their lives, SpaceX is buying confidence through controlled destruction and aggressive iteration. The question isn't whether they can make the timeline, it's whether they can make it safely enough that astronauts will climb aboard. So here's what we're really watching unfold at SpaceX right now. That Raptor 3 explosion at McGregor wasn't a setback. It was a calculated step toward understanding the exact limits these engines can handle before they fail. The demolition of Pad 1 isn't destruction, it's evolution, making room for the infrastructure that will support dozens of launches per year instead of a handful. And Ship 39's record-breaking 33-day build time isn't just impressive, it's proof that SpaceX can manufacture spacecraft fast enough to meet the most aggressive lunar timeline in history. What China's dealing with right now aboard Tiangong shows us the stakes. When you have crew in space and something goes wrong, every hour counts every system has to work. Every backup plan needs a backup. SpaceX is building that reliability now, before astronauts climb aboard, by breaking things deliberately so they understand exactly how and why systems fail 19 months until an uncrewed starship attempts a lunar landing, 33 months until crew members trust their lives to these systems. The clock is running and SpaceX is responding the only way they know how, by testing harder, building faster, and accepting nothing less than absolute confidence in every component. Flight 12 in January will show us if this aggressive approach is paying off. The first in-space Raptor relight will either validate everything we've seen or send SpaceX back to McGregor for more controlled explosions and hard-earned data if you want to follow every development as SpaceX pushes toward the moon, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for Atlas Space Drop, a comment below with your prediction. Will Flight 12's engine relight work perfectly, or will SpaceX need more iterations? And if you found this breakdown valuable, share it with anyone tracking the new space race. The next chapter of human spaceflight is being written right now, one explosion and one demolished launch pad at a time. And we'll be here covering every critical moment.